Hey folks, it's Dave Snyder. Hopefully you've enjoyed looking through my museum blog post. I do plan to make a whole little series and possibly an open source repository uh, that allows people to build their own system that they can do this type of stuff with. And to do that properly, I thought I'd give a preview that just shows my day-to-day -day workflow with actually capturing files and how things move about. Uh, so you've already probably browsed around the museum a little bit at this point. Uh, you've seen that we can just sort of jump into any of these files and that there's a text transcription that's happened. The color properties are getting there. Uh, things are also getting auto, um, auto tagged here. That's all happening through Google's Vision API. And if we look at just the, the basic flow of how files move from my desktop into the website, uh, essentially you start by capturing either with like something like OBS, like what I'm doing right now, or I use a program called Flameshot, which is an uh, open source uh, screenshot program that allows me to just do regular captures. I then save those files into a specific folder on my computer where I've got a small TypeScript script, <laughs> TypeScript script, uh, that watches that folder and then shoots those files over to Google where we host the images initially, then run all the Google Vision APIs through it, which specifically are the detect labels, the detect text in images, and the detect image properties APIs. That's what gives me all the metadata around the image. Then lastly, what we do is we upload that file to Zeta and we build a record. So if you don't know it, Zeta is a uh, cloud platform database system that not only allows you to do normal database -y things, but you can actually store file records in there and then transform them. So when we're coming through in the museum itself, the histogram is built through Zeta, the search is built through Zeta, uh, all the filtering that we have here is built through Zeta, uh, and then um, the actual transformations of the images are done there as well. So it's probably too much talk for you. Let's see what happens when I actually take a screenshot. Uh, so I invoke it by just hitting a uh, special key command. And then this is Flameshot, which again, like I said, it's open source, it's free. Uh, and you can just start typing on your screen and save a file. Now, when I save that file, like I said, I save to a specific directory on my computer, which is called in. Uh, so Dave Cloud in. When I go save that file, notice that it just has the date name for it. But when it gets saved, everything gets scrambled up, uh, gets a hash key assigned to it. And then you can see a URL was put in my notification. It was also put on my clipboard. This is what makes it really fast for me to just put one up and then paste that URL to somebody and we can see that image is in here. Now, if we're going to come through and look in our Google storage bucket and sort it by time, uh, hold on, let me make sure that I get the newest file. So we want one that last creation. Here we go. Uh, you'll see that it is, in fact, our hello world file that's there. So this is just an open Google bucket. It's public to the Internet. Uh, and I've attached my snid.es domain to it. And then we're just placing things in by uh, the year and the month. And that's pretty simple. That's how I started. Uh, what I then in later wanted to do was add that Zeta layer and make things searchable. So if we come over to our Zeta database over here, we can see that our file, uh, which is this one right here, was actually uploaded. Uh, as well. It's set um, in here with a bunch of metadata. So if we come over, we can see it's got all the data that it's read from it. This is coming from Google, and we're just storing all that text within our database. Uh, we also here have some settings where we can turn things on or off. So by default, uh, when we're in the museum, uh, there is a login system. So right now I'm looking at things as an administrator. I have access to hidden files uh, and I've turned on things that are my favorite. Now I can come in here at any time uh, and log out so that I'm like a regular user. And now when I come into this, um, this area, let's go to that specific ID. 
you'll notice that we don't actually have access to that file. It's not searchable. You're not gonna be able to get to it through an endpoint. All this stuff is hitting server side, so you've gotta have a key uh, and the requirement to actually get to it. Now, if we came in here and changed his favorite from false to true, uh, when we come back to this file and again, paste uh, the ID within it, that file is now available. So we've added some curation abilities uh, that are within the website that allows us uh, to do this type of stuff. I don't know why I'm saying us. I'm used to working for companies. This is something I build on my own. So it allows me to do it, uh, essentially. And you can see it's brought out all those uh, different attributes. It's got the color um, properties on it. It's got some tagging on it. And then it's got the text transcription. So at a high level, that's basically how things work. You know, when you put all this stuff together, it makes for really fast screenshots, and then it gives me a way for things to be searchable. I've got a blog post coming that will talk more specifically about the TypeScript system that I've set to tie all this kind of stuff together uh, and look forward uh, to it in a little bit of time, probably about a week. Anyways, hope you enjoy it. See you all.